Hello everyone. I thought I'd do a quick episode that talks about the different ways that I heat my boat. And the reason I'm doing this episode is because it's still probably the most often asked question I get after all these years. If you've been following the channel for any length of time, you know that I'm on Canada's west coast in the more northern areas of the coast in Prince Rupert. That's just below Alaska. So having a good heat on the boat is important in this part of the world. The heat source that I'll choose will sort of depend on what I'm doing with the boat at the time, whether I'm at the marina, whether I'm underway, or on the hook. When I'm at the marina, I primarily use a little electric space heater because I'm plugged into shore power. I don't have to worry about uh, refueling the heater because it's just plugged into electricity. When I'm underway, I have a little bus heater and that runs off the coolant from my freshwater cooled diesel engine and it just blows a fan, uh, much like in a car I guess, and it heats the cabin up. I'll show that to you in a minute. And the third heat source I have on the boat is the little Newport Dickinson wall furnace, which you can see behind me. One other thing I did before I moved more north was fully insulate the boat. That's not only made a huge difference in being able to retain heat in the cabin, but it's also made a big difference in humidity levels and also uh, condensation in the cupboards. I have no condensation in any of my cupboards anymore uh, since I've insulated, and the heat retention is greatly improved. Someone told me a long time ago that uh, heating dry air is a lot easier than heating wet air. So I think that makes sense, and having low humidity and no condensation uh, does make it a lot easier to heat the boat while you're uh, on board. Well, let's adjust the camera a little bit. I'll show you first the little space heater that I use, and I'll show you the bus heater that runs off the engine. Then I will show you the location of the propane tank, and then we'll go over the whole setup of the propane wall furnace, which is probably what most people are interested in uh, getting more information on. So when I'm at the marina, as I mentioned, I primarily use electric heat because I'm plugged into shore power and this way I don't have to refuel the propane tank uh, on a continual basis. And you can get these anywhere. There's nothing fancy about this. One thing I would recommend if you do get a little space heater is that it has a safety in it where that if it tips over it stops. This heats up the boat really well. It's usually about 18 to 20 degrees um, when I'm at the marina. So right over here next to the space heater you can see there's the bus heater. Now this runs off the diesel engine, the coolant that I have that runs through the engine comes through a little heat exchanger in behind this unit and it just has a, a fan, a high and low setting. So while the engine is running this blows out a lot of hot air and when I'm cruising or underway what I'll normally do is uh, in the last hour of uh, my uh, trip for the day I'll turn this on and by the time I drop the hook and get settled the cabin's already nice and warm so that when I start the wall furnace up it doesn't have to uh, heat the cabin right from a cold temperature. It's already quite warm in here. The wall furnace that you see behind me is a Newport Dickinson P9000 and it runs on propane. I didn't install it on the boat. It was already on the boat when I bought it. So I get a lot of questions about the installation, but I didn't uh, install this one, so I don't have those answers. I can tell you what the setup is and the consumption rates, and I'll show you how to operate it. Uh, based on a 10-pound propane tank that I use, on the low setting I should get uh, 70 hours out of it, and on the high setting I should get about 50 hours. With the fan off, on the low setting, it'll throw out 3,100 BTUs, and on the high setting, 4,300 BTUs. 
as I mentioned, it has a fan. It's a variable fan. On the low, if you turn the fan on, it bumps it up to 6428 BTUs. And if you turn it the fan to high, it's 9000 BTUs, which is why I'm guessing it's called the P9000. The fan's a bit loud, so I would never have it on high unless I was really desperate for heat. And I normally have it on low to medium, and that's a, a tolerable level uh, for noise uh, when running the fan. So here we are in the cockpit, and this is where the propane tank is that fuels the wall furnace down below. It's on the port side of the boat, and I'm not sure if you could tell from the video down below, but the wall furnace is on the port side of the cabin. So you just open the lid, it's got a vent hole in the bottom that vents outside the boat if there are any fumes in here. And you just turn it on. And it's an aluminum tank, so it's light and it doesn't corrode. I have a seat like this on the starboard side that has a tank as well, and that uh, fuels the stove and the oven, which is on the starboard side of the cabin down below. After I've opened the tank outside, I come in and I turn on my propane solenoid. Once I've turned on the propane solenoid, I'll come over here and turn on the propane sniffer. This will detect if there's a propane leak in the boat. I have two sensors, one near the propane wall furnace and a second sensor near the propane stove and oven. And one last safety related item on the boat is my carbon monoxide detector. And this carbon monoxide detector runs 24-7. It's battery operated, so I switch those out every six months or so. And a very important item to have on the boat. And here's a little closer look at the Newport Dickinson wall furnace. The knob at the bottom right controls whether it's off or on the low or high setting. The bottom left has a little on and off switch for the fan and then the knob determines the setting of the fan. Where the glass is, that's where the flame burns in behind. So I'll open that up and show you in a minute. And just above that is where the air blows out from the fan. There's a heat shield behind it on the wall on the bulkhead there and the chimney this pipe it's a double pipe so if you can imagine there's a smaller pipe inside that one here's the chimney for the wall furnace and you'll see that it's got two caps the fresh air is drawn in through the bottom and then it's exhausted out through the top the pipe that goes down uh, through the cabin top to the furnace. It's a double pipe, so it's got a exterior pipe that when this fresh air is drawn in it goes down the outer part of the pipe and then when it's exhausted out it goes through the inner pipe that comes out and of course exhausts higher. So before I show you how to light the stove I'll just go over it quickly again. Here's the knob that is off low or high settings. Here's the power switch for the fan this is the knob to adjust the fan speed. Here's where the flame will be in behind here. And when the fan is on, it comes out of here, that all that hot air. To open it, you just unscrew the door. The door will swing open. You get your lighter ready. You have to push the knob in and turn it to the left, to the low setting, to get the fuel flowing in here. So you just turn it, light it, I'm on the low setting, I'm still holding the knob in. After a few seconds you can close the door. And I usually hold this for about another five or six seconds just uh, to be sure the flame doesn't blow out. And I can release it and now I'll turn it to the high setting. It'll take a few minutes to warm up but uh, that's it, super simple operation. Here's the fan. So you can hear uh, it's not totally silent. 
but you can turn it down and I can already feel heat coming out of here uh, right being blown out I can turn it up higher it is a bit noisy on the higher settings so I usually have it you know on a lower setting but that's enough to increase the efficiency of it so the wall furnace has been running now for a few minutes and it's already getting quite warm I can feel quite a bit of heat coming out of here now you do have to be aware that the sides will get hot also this little knob here will get hot if you decide to try and open it this will be quite warm these knobs don't get warm at all so you're safe to touch them to turn it off I just turn the fan off and just push the knob in to the off position and that's it it's a very simple operation of course I'll go and turn off the solenoid and close the tank in the cockpit and turn off the propane sniffer and that is about it for the operation of this uh, unit now I mentioned that I insulated the boat that was primarily done in all the cupboards and one of the other things I've done to make the boat quite a bit warmer is adding carpet and underlay so as much as I love the the hardwood floors they're fine in the summer but uh, in the winter months having this uh, underlay and carpet layer makes a huge difference in the temperature in here when I selected my underlay I used um, one that had the most insulating properties so it's designed to be laid down on a cement slab because there are different uh, qualities and insulating properties for different underlays so if you are going to do something like that I recommend getting uh, the one that's for the concrete so that it has the most insulating qualities and I'll quickly show you the uh, insulating I did in the cupboards I'll just show you one cupboard to give you an idea of what I've done there so I've just picked a cupboard that's above the galley here and I'll show you what I've done for insulating um, you can see that I have motion sensor lights in some of the darker cupboards and uh, I have an option to turn those off if I'm sailing otherwise they'd be going on turning on all the time but uh, not related to the insulating but a little idea for people if they have dark cupboards you can put uh, motion activated lights in them and that'll stay on for about 10 or 15 seconds and then it turns off again uh, if you look in the back you can see there's some horizontal wood strips uh, I think that's about a quarter or three eighths I can't remember for sure uh, for the the depth or the thickness of that when I did this I first glued vertical wood strips to the hull I used a construction adhesive and then in between the strips I put half inch closed cell foam and then I finished it with the uh, horizontal wood strips and made a huge difference I've also glued uh, the half inch closed cell foam to the top and I didn't put uh, wood strips along the top I just put a, a cork finish on there and it's a really thin cork you could just cut it with scissors super easy to work with and I just glued it to the the closed cell foam and this has stopped all condensation in all the cupboards that I've done this to uh, I've done it in the bathroom or the head you call it uh, all the other cupboards on the boat and in little pockets everywhere I could do it I, I, I did it and that has made a really big difference not only in heat retention but as I mentioned condensation and there's just a little better look at that cork on the ceiling inside the cupboard well I hope that gave everyone a better idea on the different ways that I heat my boat whether I'm at the marina underway or on the hook and one of the questions I get in regards to the propane wall furnace is is it enough to heat my boat appropriately in this climate that I'm in and I would say borderline yes when I'm on the hook one thing I don't like about propane is uh, it's volatile 
So I don't really like leaving it on overnight. Once I go to sleep, I like to turn it off. Of course, then you're waking up to a pretty cold boat in the morning. A diesel system would be much safer and I would feel more comfortable running it all night. And the other challenge about propane is that you can't fill the propane just anywhere. There's so many places on the coast where you can get diesel uh, to fill your tanks for your engine. And if I had a diesel system, uh, I would be able to fill it uh, easier. So I have been looking at other heating systems. I don't really want to replace this one with a uh, diesel wall furnace. Like they have, Dickinson has the basically the same model but in diesel. Or not the same model, but same setup it with a diesel. I'm probably going to go to something that's a little bit different, which would be like an S-bar unit. Um, or Webasto, I think, is another name. And that's a little unit that I'll mount somewhere in the lazarette in the back. It'll be exhaust, exhausted out, uh, vented out the side of the boat. And the drawback to that is you have to run ducting through the boat, like heat ducts, and then have certain locations where you're going to have that forced air coming out. The other drawback is that you have to run a little fan, but it's a dry heat, it's very efficient, it's down low, and other people that I've talked to that cruise and are on the hook this time of year in the winter uh, in sub-zero conditions are very happy with that system. Anyways, that's uh, a look at the heating systems on my boat and what I might do in the future. It's adequate for now but I like to have a little bit more adequate, <laughs> above adequate, I guess you'd say. So I'm probably going to look at a, an additional heating system. I'm not going to get rid of this one, but have an additional one. Anyways, that's it for now. And uh, if you guys have any other things you want uh, me to talk about in regards to uh, being on the boat in this part of the world, uh, just let me know.